Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. I'm your host Patson and today we're gonna be taking a look at r slash true off my chest where OP is finally waking up. Let's begin. I am done and I am heartbroken. I have no one. Posted by Reddit user throw our a forgotten. I have been married for 15 years. I have known my wife since I was 8. We have three daughters together, 17, 14, and 11. I'm tired of feeling like I'm an outsider in my relationships with all of them. I'm just an ATM and taxi service to my kids. My wife hasn't kissed me in six months. She has not said that she loves me in 1.5 years. No matter how much I communicate, try to plan anything or do anything it is always shot down, forgotten, or dismissed. I don't get angry, and I don't yell. I don't get physical. I like to splurge during birthdays and Mother's Day. I throw parties and give gifts and try to show how much I love them. I get a lukewarm thanks, and if I'm lucky, a side hug that lasts .0001 seconds. By the end of this, you are going to be crying. Like a little bitch. This week was the breaking point. Father's Day. I wake up to an empty house. Odd. No note. Nothing was written on the calendar, and nothing said beforehand. I sent a text, and I got back. I took the girls out for a spa day, don't wait up. Then nothing, literally nothing. Dinner time comes around, and they get home. I asked how their day was, they said it was fine. I asked what they would like for dinner. Nothing, we already ate at one of my favorite restaurants. Cool, whatever. There is no mention of it being Father's Day. No I love you, how are you? Nothing. Fast forward to Wednesday, which was my birthday. Nothing. Literally again, nothing. I suggested plans. They get shot down. I suggested food. Nope, shot down. Ask about watching a movie, they are all too busy, they just sat on their phones doing nothing. Now to Thursday night. I'm in bed. My wife is next to me. She rolls over and says in a crappy tone, Oh, your birthday was the other day. I guess you expect to have sex. That broke something in me, best of my memory of how it went down. I said no, I don't expect sex. At this point, I don't expect anything anymore. Her, what is that supposed to mean? So, I started asking her questions. When was the last time we shared a kiss? Like a week. Nope, it was in December, and it was during her parents' holiday party. When was the last time we had sex? The beginning of the year. Nope, wrong, it has been over a year. She was adamant that we did it in February. I was dealing with my mom's health and her passing. So, I said something like, you may have had sex, but it wasn't with me. When was the last time you said you love me? I say it all the time. Not to me. Check your messages and you don't say it to me face to face. Well, you should just know I do. When was the last time we went on a date? Long pause. Her, you're being unfair. Emotions turned on fully. I was crying and raising my voice at this point. Wow. Like a bitch. And that's what Frieza said. It asks her how. She can't answer. I asked her how wanting any sign of love from anyone in the house is unfair. If expecting anything for my birthday or Father's Day was unfair. She got an oh shit look. Yeah, you forgot that as well. I'm not an ATM, I'm not a taxi service, I'm not a punching bag. She asked why this was coming up out of the blue. It didn't. I have tried to talk to my family and again get dismissed or ignored. I brought up examples. I got an I didn't know you were serious. I didn't know it was such a big deal. I left saying something to the point of, if you want to pretend that I'm invisible and don't exist fine, you don't have to pretend anymore. I left the house at almost midnight on Thursday or Friday morning. Haven't been home since. I'm not sure what to do now. I'm finally sober enough to think, but I don't know what to do. First time drinking in over 15 years by the way, and I'm not going to drink anymore. I love my family, but I can't keep this up. I don't know what more I can do. I think they would be happier without me. They already act like I don't exist. I can't be the one who is blamed for everything. If I truly am the problem, then me not being there should fix it. I can't do it anymore. I have tried to be a good provider, a good partner, and a good dad. Never missed an event of our kids. Never prioritized work. I kept good hours so I could see them more. Took on more responsibility to better our life and future. But it is never appreciated. It is never enough. I am never enough. I only have one message from my wife, I'm sorry for making you feel that way. We all love you, and we are here for you when you want to come home and talk. That is it. No other messages. No calls. Nothing from the kids. I feel like if they really wanted me there, they would try reaching out more. All of the kids have their own phone. I don't know what she told them. I'm sure they heard me raise my voice. 
Me raising my voice would have definitely got their attention since I never do. I'm sure they heard me leave. I just don't know. Edit to add. Thanks everyone. I did not think anyone would care. You have given me some hope and advice I'm going to look into. I don't know how to respond to a lot of the comments. I know how to just not in words. I'm going to try to figure things out more. I'm now 100% sober, so my mind, a lot clearer. I'm going to start meeting with people on Monday and try to come up with options. And now for OP's update. I have not been well, but I am doing better. You guys have helped me a lot and it means more than you know. I was able to get help through my work. They have resources for both therapy as well as legal counsel. But somehow my boss found out I was reaching out and now won't leave me alone but that's unimportant. I know she only has good intentions. So far, I like the new therapist I was able to get an appointment with. I thought there would be a long wait list. She recommended a family or spousal therapist as she focuses more on individuals. I talked to them as well. I got referred to divorce lawyers. I don't want to use them, but I had a talk with them and got an idea of what that route would be like. I'll be like 70% screwed. But we are in an at-fault state, so if it turns out she is cheating, I'll be okay-ish. My kids did reach out after a few days ago, worried. I told them I'm fine, do truly love them, and miss them but needed space and time. For the first time ever, I miss some of their extracurricular activities. I think that is what made them understand something was really wrong. Some other family members and friends noticed and started asking questions to all involved. My kids also mentioned how things were not the same without me around, and my wife was struggling. <laughs> my wife reached out a few times just checking in, apologizing, giving me updates on things, and a couple of the times, she asked about the 4th of July. We usually host a barbecue party. I said I wasn't interested, but I said that she and I needed to talk alone in person. That happened the weekend after the 4th. Apparently, she was planning the 4th as a surprise birthday party for me after I had left to make up for forgetting my birthday. But I ruined it as I didn't go and wasn't interested. That's stupid! You're stupid! Stop being stupid! When we met up to talk, she wasn't alone and brought the kids. I was happy to see them. They seemed happy to see me as well. But I asked my wife and I to talk alone. When I pointed this out, she said the kids missed me, and it was fine, we can talk with them here. I believe it was more of a manipulative move. I explained that this was another example of how my feelings or wants gets ignored and cast aside. How I have been ignored for a while and how that is not right by anyone. She kept apologizing. I said while I acknowledge the apologies, I don't accept them. Most of the apologies, to me, feel like they are not real. Such as her initial apology of I'm sorry you feel that way or they sound forced or just saying what she thinks I want to hear. Actions speak louder than those empty words. I also said that she is setting an example and expectations on how I'm treated and how our daughters will see and treat me in their future relationships. As of now, no one should be treated this way. I think at this point, my wife regretted bringing the kids. My 14-year-old took my 11-year-old for some snacks. My 17-year-old stayed. I flat out asked if there was anyone else. If she was cheating physically or emotionally or otherwise, she looked like I had just slapped her. She said she would never do that. <laughs> I asked why she was so adamant about us having sex if February, daughter left at this point, when it has been longer. Why has every part of our romance died within a year span from her part? She didn't know. We talked for an additional 20 minutes. I finally took out two folders I had with me. One was a separation document, not quite a divorce, but halfway to it. The other was therapist referrals for individuals and couples. I needed her to understand how serious I am about this situation. I asked her to look over each other and ask herself what she wanted. But she had to make the decision and schedule the appointments. I explained that I'm done living this way, and if she chooses to stay with me, then there are going to be major changes occurring both in our relationship and at home. I love the woman I married, had kids with, and built a life together. But I don't know where she went. My kids came back, and my 11-year-old was mad I wasn't going back with them that night. I gave my wife time. She contacted me the next day, saying she has to make appointments for herself and for herself and I she explained that she set up some bi-weekly individual therapy and we have our first couple's therapy early next month. The reason for the wait was so she could establish herself and work on herself first. I have been using the gray rock method towards her since the initial incident per yours and my therapist's recommendations. 
So, it's still a work in progress. I'm not in as dark of a place as I was when I first posted. Some things are better than it was. I'm willing to put in the work, but it won't be one-sided. There is a plan moving forward, so that's a plus. I have been home for a week now but I'm sleeping in a different room. Some changes have been put in place already, but time will be the real test. As a side note on the second night of me being back, she actually tried to initiate sex but I said no, that it wasn't the time or place for that. We had a lot to work out before that could happen. As always, peace, love, and chicken grease. OP, I'm glad that you shut down her advances. She was trying to manipulate you with sex and probably hoped that you would forget the need for therapy so that she could just go back to being the terrible wife that she is. Also, she never denied that she had sex with anyone else. OP, you can't be this blind to things, man. Why are you still here? She was initiating sex because she was probably pregnant with another man's child. Working on herself just translates to terminating it. One other thing is that your kids shouldn't get a free pass either. All of them are old enough to know and to do better. They would have seen their friends posting all over social media, talking about Father's Day, and they did nothing. They didn't care, man. Look, I understand that you love your family and care for them very deeply, but the feeling is not mutual. All they've done is to make some half ass attempts so that they won't lose their ATM and chauffeur. I have zero confidence that things will ever change, because it's been happening for so long. The final decision is all on you, man, and I'll be sure to look out for your final update. Good luck, OP. Viewer support is the best way for me to remain independent and continue bringing you these daily videos, which will always be here on my channels for you to watch absolutely free. So please consider subscribing to me on Rumble and on YouTube. Both will be linked in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you really like it, consider subscribing to Pat Sun to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.